Okay, so the body, we have to create a, a hollow in here. Uh, I use my big number five and create my hollow in here. And you should be able to put your thumb in there to feel that hollow. Okay, similarly on the other side, but not as much because that arm is forward, but this arm is back. So on the back of his body, then the shoulders from this shoulder to that shoulder, right across, is nearly a straight line. Once again, using my big number five. So it looks something like that, more or less straight across. Then round the the waist, when you round the waist, use a, uh, I'd use a, what's this, a number 988 millimeter, and uh, that allows you to, to create the waist. When you create the waist, then you get a bulbous section here that gives him the, the bum that is required. And if you take a look at the diagram, see where the, on the diagram, the, the hand and the bum kind of ends up at the same spot. So that might give you the, uh, the clue as to where to, or the measurement as to where you want to put the, his bum. So you would remove that material there. And you can see now that according to the diagram, uh, however you want, you want to leave them kind of chunky, your crotch would stay about the same place. You, if you don't, well then you could thin down the, the legs and, and the crotch could come up quite a bit higher. It just it depends on how, how you want to go with it. But either way, create the hollow in here and that gives you this bulbar section here for to create his bum. I'll go ahead and set that up. We're gradually working our way down. Uh, we've got the uh, glove on the other side just about done. And, there's another thing, another feature on his belly that I want to show you. So there I have a very overly exaggerated bum, uh, the cheek on his bum, and I'm likely to mess around with that some more. <clears throat> so then you can create his waist, and the waist would disappear behind the ball and come out the other side. That would be where his belt would be. And disappear through the arm. Don't worry too much about the front side at this point in time. But now you can see that by doing that I can now move my crotch line up and I'll do that. So there we go. I've got the I've got the bum hollowed out down underneath it. I raised the crotch up. It was a way down here and I've raised it up. Uh, that allows me to create this hollow in here. Uh, pretty bulbous. And then I started to take the waist down. Now the one thing to remember that in order to emphasize the size of his bum, which they do in the, the diagram, uh, you create a, a real bulbous section here. But when you put the belt in it, uh, when you have a belt on, a, on cloth, the belt sits in a little bit tighter and the cloth kind of hangs over just a little bit. So that when you do go to carve the belt in, uh, it'll be a little bit tighter, a little bit indented, if you will. So, so like the belt will, will be in this section through here and uh, then knock that in just a bit. But create that outside shape first and then uh, when you knock the belt in it'll be uh, okay so continue it right around to the other side so that you get that circle going all right so that's pretty well it now you can see the ball and this guy here is going to end up just about free it might be still touching on his bum here but uh, in the area up in here it's going to be uh, pretty much free okay i'll pass it around okay so there it is with uh, a real hefty bum on them, which you might want to 
to shape a little bit differently and then start to carry that around to the towards the front get underneath this arm a little bit um, you can start to hollow out the uh, this arm in here too you can see where the the uh, arm is it's too uh, thick so you're going to have to get rid of some of that material up in there and uh, there's going to be a, a more of a hollow come down here so that that allows you to round over the the back muscles there a little bit uh, likewise over on this side here you might want to make the hollow a little bit bigger bigger and a little bit more pronounced you can see how it's a bit too thick coming through here so you're going to have to take some off the inside switch it over to the front and you can see it's the same thing applies that it's a little bit too heavy in here and there's not too much of a hollow coming down here to uh, to create that uh, separation between the body and the arm the thing I want to point out to you here is um, his belly so can you see that the belly comes up okay and then look at what he's got here okay he's got a real honker of a of a belly sitting in there it doesn't show up as much on this side because the globe hangs hides it but if the the belly was to be drawn in there it would be something like that wouldn't it all right so pay attention to this side in particular so that then when you come over here you can see see how I put the line on there See how I put the, so that's going to create the belly, it's going to come up, in, and then back out. So that dictates the shape of the glove. Alright, so that the fingers on the glove are going to be out here, and the belly part of it is going to be in here. So if I take my, my finished one over here, out you can see where, where I'm going here. Can you see where the belly sticks out? Now that's got the detail of the of the top of his pants and his belt, but uh, the same thing applies here. Like the the belly is out and over. Depending on how much material you got there, you can make, really make it exaggerated. And all that is all, all you have to do in order to create that is to just to make a, a V cut in there. And I would I would just use a V tool and uh, just create my shape. Real simple. My hand there. I'm not worrying about the glove because the glove can take the shape of the belly. I'm creating the shape of the belly. So, can you see that that then creates the shape of the belly? And you can undercut this, knock the glove back further. If you want to exaggerate it a bit more, no problem. I might mess around with that a bit, and I'll pass it around. Okay, so the first thing about the glove is that you've got to get the right shape. So remember that we created the belly. So when you create the belly, now you have to make sure that the glove has an end to it, okay, and where the wrist joins in and then you go for the shape so you can see that it's tighter at the wrist and then wider towards uh, where the fingers are once again at the top it's the same thing this is where the thumb would be up in here so if you take a look at the picture and we'll go by the picture you'll see that there is uh, a rib there and there's a rib there so that's the first two things I would create and I would mark them on and they don't have to be exactly the same, but give you an idea. So that creates kind of the folds in the in the glove. So then you, the other point I'll make here is that the fingers, just like in a hand, they don't come all the way up to that rib. They they stop a little bit short. And notice there's one, two, three, four fingers. So we got one, two, three, four notches that we have to create and then this is a webbing at the top so you can see that it takes up about the width of two fingers 
So create that webbing first by putting a line there. So now you got to divide this section into four fingers and make them roughly all the same. That that would be um, that would be good enough. So uh, so just arbitrarily make your fingers and yeah. So that kind of looks like that. So then once you're satisfied that they're relatively the same, bring them back. not quite to the ribbing. Alright, so then it's just a question of using a V-tool to carve off your lines and that, that creates your your fingers. The only other thing to remember is at the very end we got to turn the corner and create the end of those fingers and that's just done with a with a curved gouge that's all about a number five or a number seven. Number seven likely would work best. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a V-tool through there and uh, so there it is with the the notches cut in and I've just taken a what is this? This is a number seven uh, six millimeter and I've created the ends just by pushing it in at the end that creates the ends of the fingers. Uh, the end of the the webbing can be cut with a a knife. I've you, I've put the webbing in there but never cut it in and just marked it. Uh, kind of like the shape of it right now, so I'll uh, I'll do a V-tool on that. Typically, I'll go deeper with the separation between the fingers and a little bit shallower for the webbing, just to indicate a little bit different texturing. There we go. Yep. All right. So the idea here is I want to be able to create the button on top of the hat because from that, then you can just make V-tools to come down to create the separation. So how do you do it? Well there's the, there's the tool I use. It's a uh, three millimeter number seven and notice that it's a fingernail shape on the bottom and you'll see why in a minute. So you, what you do is you separate it and I, I line it up uh, so it's lined up perfectly with the hat because otherwise if I start over here it could end up being off. Okay this way on it doesn't really matter too much. So I'm going to I'm going to put it I've got it marked out where I want it roughly. So I'm going to push it in. Push it in. I'm going to lift it and turn it. Let it slide around. Lift it and turn it and let it slide around. I'll stop there so you can see see how it's making the circle. Pass it around. Um, so I'll finish it off now. So you can quit and come back and so now I'm going to slide it some more, slide it some more, slide it some more. So there it is, it's completed. So now you got to use the same tool. You got less chance of knocking that button off because the grain is up and down, and this is all end grain. But all this does is relieve all the material like around it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? After you mark it, put some glue on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to knock it out. After you put glue on it. So it doesn't have to be too fancy. Then I'll take a small V tool. A gouge would work fine too. You got to create the ribbing for the the side of the hat. Uh, you know how it fits on your head. So you use that as your start mark and work your way up. And end up at the button. So that's basically all there is to doing a hat. Now it does go all the way around to the front and you can create that all the way around. But uh, that's basically it. I mean it's, it's as simple as that. You can reshape the hat. That's, this is awful dirty. But you can reshape that hat. I use a flatter gouge in order to reshape the hat. Okay. Okay, so the finishing off the the fingers here, and you can undercut that to a certain extent. Use a knife or uh, use a gouge to go underneath it. Um, get the shape of the shape of the body the way you want it. That big belly, and then uh, where the belt comes out. You can figure that out and put it uh, underneath uh, as it comes around. Um, 
to emphasize the belly, bring the, the belt up, and that helps to emphasize the big belly. Then what you should work at is the collar. What to decide on what kind of a collar you want. This guy here has just kind of a rolled collar, nothing much to it. Um, and it goes up and over and comes over the back. So uh, I've, I've set up one side here. So you, you set up the outside shape first and uh, then just do a V tool to, to create the, the shape that you want. Uh, you can have as much of a of a shape down here as you want. Just remember that he has a bit of a, a chest, but then it comes out to the belly. So it nearly follows the cut line of the rough out. Establish what shape you want for the hair. I've just uh, messed around a little bit with this one corner here. I like hair that does not have the V-tool all the way to the top. Divide it up into pieces, and that makes it look shorter hair. Long hair, like a woman's hair with the long hair, has long lines to it. Men's hair that have a short haircut, you, do, you use shorter strokes. You, you put maybe between this distance here, you might put two or three different uh, V-cuts in it. The same with the sideburns. If you want to emphasize the length of a sideburn, then you, uh, you make it look long by making long V-tools. Uh, if you want to make it look short, then make it shorter. And you can see where I've got both working in here. i got a long one here, but I've got a couple of short ones here. So it don't necessarily need to go all in the same direction. The same with the hair. Don't run them all in the same direction. One other thing that you should do, and that is to create a, uh, the eyebrows. Once you've got the shape of the eyebrow established the way you want it, and this separation in between the, the, uh, the eyebrows at the nose is critical. Once you get all that shape, then take a V-tool and put the back of the V-tool on the, the nose, on the tip of the nose. And then as you remove the wood, keep it there and see how you're going to create that ray shape as it comes around. So you change the shape of the, the hair on the eyebrow itself. Okay. By just by simp a simple process of keeping the tool on the, the tip of the nose and working it back and forth as you go around. So don't forget to give texture to the eyebrow because that that will be very obvious once you get done. And we'll leave it at that. So I would suggest uh, for homework to work again from the waist up and then we'll work uh, from the waist down next time.